Hello and welcome to this tutorial for users of Microsoft Excel. In this tutorial I'll show you how to use a very popular function in Excel, the IF function. And I'll just go through the basics of what the function does and then we'll work through some examples and you can see how it may be useful for the work that you're doing. So how does the IF function work? Well I've outlined it here as you can see. Essentially an IF function is a way of asking a question about something on the spreadsheet. For example, um, in this example, the question is, are we sold out of a particular product, product A? And what I would like to have happen is if the product is sold out, we have a message appear to say order more. And if the product isn't sold out, then a message appears on the spreadsheet to say stock OK. And that message will change depending on the stock value. So in a way, it's a way of automating your spreadsheet so Excel is doing the work for you instead of you having to manually enter the information. It'll make a bit more sense when I show you an example and uh, you can see how simple it actually is to put together. And here we have a very simple example and I've got a cell where I've got to enter a quantity and a message box here for the status of that particular piece of stock. So I'll go into the quantity cell and we'll type in a value, let's just say 10 for example. And I'll just press the tab key to jump across to our stock status box. And here is where I will create the if function. So as with any calculation or function in Excel, the first thing you do is type the equals key on the keyboard and that tells Excel that whatever follows will be part of a calculation or a function. Type the name of the function, in this case obviously it's if and then type the open parentheses as you would do with any other function in Excel to contain the different parts of the function. There are three basic parts to so an if function. You have the logical test, which is essentially the question, and then you have a result that will appear if that test is true, and another result that will appear if that test is false. And so the first thing we want to do is create the question, or the logical test as Excel prefer to call it. And my question is, are we sold out of product A? But I can't just type out that particular question. We have to put it in Excel's language. So what I'm going to do is get Excel to look at the value by clicking on the cell. And then I want to know if that value is zero, which basically means we're sold out. So I type equals zero. So that is the question. Is the value in C9 zero? I'm going to type a comma. And now I want to have a message appear if that is true, if we are sold out, and the message will be between quotation marks because it's text, order more. Easy as that. Type a comma again, and then I'm going to have another message appear if we're not sold out. In other words, we have some kind of stock level, and the message will be stock OK. And finally, just close the parentheses or brackets if you prefer. And there's the completed function. So I'm going to press the Enter key and we'll see what result we get. So I'm just going to move over onto the cell where I've created the function. And always bear in mind, you can see the function in detail in the formula bar. So although you see the result on the spreadsheet, the actual formula appears there for you to read if you need to. So let's go and change that stock value down then. So theoretically, anything above zero should read stock OK. So we'll try maybe one. Let's make sure it's working. Obviously it is. And uh, let's sell that final unit and see what happens. There we go. So when that stock level hits zero, the message now comes up to say order more. And that's a great way of having Excel do some work for you by automating messages on your spreadsheet. So let's look at another example of using the if function. Here we've got two businesses and the holiday businesses and they also sell a range of relevant accessories as you can see and what I'd like Excel to do is tell me which business is offering the best price and we're going to use the if function to get that result. So the first thing again type equals if open parentheses. So I'm going to ask Excel to look at the value under ABC holidays first. So we want to know is ABC holidays better value than Fred's adventure holidays and to do that I ask is C4 less than B4, which is the price for Fred. Type a comma. If that's true, I want the name ABC Holidays to appear. Instead of typing that out, I'm going to simply click on that cell value. 
I also want to make that value an absolute reference. So I'm going to press the F4 key on the keyboard. And as you will have seen in the absolute cell reference lesson, what that does is effectively lock this reference to that cell. So as I copy down, C4 and B4 will update appropriately to the next row, but C3 will always remain as C3. Type a comma. And if the result is that ABC Holidays is not the best price, then logically Fred's Adventure Holidays is the best price. So I'll click on B3, which contains the name of the company. Again, F4 on the keyboard to make that an absolute reference. You can obviously type out the dollar symbol longhand if you want to on the keyboard, if your F4 key for whatever reason doesn't do that. Close the bracket, close the parentheses if you prefer, and press the enter key. And what we have there is Fred's Adventure Holidays because that is the best price. Now, if ABC Holidays come along and do a special offer, maybe drop the price on their gas stove to $22.95, press the Enter key, and they become the best price. So let's copy that function down into the next two cells, and we should see it working perfectly. And just one last test here to make sure it's all working correctly. I'm sure it is. Let's just drop the deluxe tent price to $7.99. And there we go, Fred's Adventure Holidays becomes the best supplier in that particular category. And again, you can see how relatively straightforward it was to put that function together and give your spreadsheets some automation and save you hopefully a bit of time. And we'll look at one more example here. And in this particular spreadsheet, I need to create two if functions. One will tell me whether the person has been given a bonus or not. And they're going to create another if function that will look at the result in the bonus column and then calculate the amount of bonus pay. To create the first function here, I'm going to use one of Excel's built-in function builders or wizards as they used to be called. And if I click in the cell where I want the result to appear first of all, then go to the formulas tab, you will find the if function in the logical list of functions. And if I just click on the third one down there, the if function, we get the dialog box appear, and you can see there we have the three elements of an if function. The logical test, value if true, and value if false. Now the first thing to notice is that in cell D4, the result cell, Excel has already placed in the equals if, and also the open and close parentheses. So all we need to do is just put in the different parts of the function. Now the logical test is going to be testing the value in B4 in the first case, that's the unit sales. And all I need to know is, is it greater than 49? And the value if it's true is going to be yes. Now I'm sure you've noticed that I didn't type out the quotation marks there. That's because I don't need to. And as you will see, when I move to the next box down, Excel automatically puts those quotes in for me. So again, another thing when you're using these function builders, it saves you a little bit of time and you might find that more useful. And finally, my value if false is the word no. And again, don't need to type the quotation marks, just click OK. And there's the result of the function. And you can see the function in the formula bar again, if you need to check it to make sure it's OK. I'm going to copy that function down to put the mouse pointer again, bottom right of the cell, get the black cross, I can then click and drag down. Alternatively, you can actually double click when you get the black cross, and that, as you may well know, runs the results of the function all the way down for you. And with the relative cell referencing, you will see again, as I move down, the formula updates to account for the different rows. So my final if function, I'm going to again use the little helper. So if I go to the logical function list, click if, just move that to one side so we can see it in the cell. So my logical test this time is to look at cell D4, the result of the first if function, and see if that is yes or no. So I click on cell D4, and I want to know if that is equal to the word no. And this time I do have to use the quotation marks because it's not a piece of text in isolation, it's part of a formula. I'm going to press the tab key this time to move to the next part of the function. And the value if it's true, in other words, if the person doesn't get a bonus, I'm afraid, they get nothing. So again, press the tab key. And here, I want to perform a calculation. If, in other words, the person does get a bonus, the result of the test is yes. What I need to do here is click on the total units and then multiply that by eight. So that will be the calculation if the person does get a bonus. 
So I'm going to click OK to complete that function. And again, you can see the completed function in the formula bar. And to test it, I'm going to copy that down. And this time I'll just click and drag to see what results we get. So there we go. So three people get a bonus and two people don't. And I'll just test it. So let's say Tom comes along and confesses he didn't actually sell 60. He'd only sold 38. Press the Enter key and uh, we remove Tom's bonus. Likewise, maybe Fred came along and just realized he sold more than he reported and he actually sold 50. Well, that gets him into the bonus scheme. So well done, Fred. $400 goes onto your pay packet. So there you've seen a few examples of creating and using the if function. I hope you've seen that it's fairly straightforward to put together and it's a very useful function within Excel. It'll help you to automate your spreadsheets, keep them accurate and save you quite a lot of time in the process. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.